Black Lives Matter. She's a Super Geek is a proud member of the Misdirected Mark Network. This episode is brought to you today by our patron, Kevin Lovecraft. Thank you to all of our patrons, and thank you, Kevin! It's a episode 140 of She's a Super Geek, the RPG actual play podcast focusing on women as GMs. Hey all, I'm Andy, and on today's episode, my co-host Senda and I are joined by Betsy Rosenblatt to play Alex White's A Cool and Lonely Courage. A Cool and Lonely Courage is a game about the incredible women of the Special Operations Executive, the SOE, a British organization in World War II that helped local resistance movements against the Axis powers. The three stories we present today about Marcel, Celine, and Marie Alice are fiction, but they are representative of what the women of the SOE faced. We are playing in tribute to the historical women who served and the many who also died. Although A Cool and Lonely Courage has light mechanics, this is not a light game, especially in 2020 when white supremacy is surging in the United States. It's easy for us looking back to overlook the actions of everyday individuals within a larger historical movement. We hope these stories of Marie Alice, Marcel, and Celine will empower you to act as an everyday individual within this larger historical moment. We have a list of resources in our show notes at sasgeek.com to help you learn about white supremacy and what we can do to help eradicate it. This game touches on many potentially triggering issues. We discussed lines and veils during character creation off mic. We also had an X card in play should anything come up during the game. And we played accepting the risks and were ready to support each other or stop if we needed to. Our content notice list is long, and we're hoping that helps you decide if you want to listen to this game. We hold an open podcast policy, so please feel free to take breaks or not listen whatever is best for your current mental health. Content notices. Nazis. World War II. Imprisonment. Concentration camps. The Holocaust. Police raids. Assassination. Hey everyone, welcome to She's a Super Geek. I'm Senda, and as always, I have my co-host Andy, and today we're joined hey. by a super special guest, Betsy Rosenblatt, to play A Cool and Lonely Courage, which is a game by Alex White. Hey Betsy, do you want to say hi to everybody? Hi everybody. <laughs> You're an awesome person that I happen to know is working on a cool game, but I won't say anything about it because that'd be like pressure and stuff. Is there anything that you would like to talk about while you have this stage before I pass you over the mic for, for this game? Oh, I appreciate that very much. I am honored to be part of Alex's game, uh, Cool and Lonely Courage. And uh, myself, I'm a avid player and designer and play tester. The game I'm working on is called Solvers, or The Solvers, and it's still very much a work in progress and has been for far too long. But the idea is it gives you the opportunity to play a team of uh, youthful mystery solvers in a book that might be something like Nancy Drew or The Hardy Boys, or for more recent references, uh, the Scooby-Doo books. And all of that's wonderful, but it will be a long time before that... <laughs> Uh, before that game ever sees the light of publishing, including but not limited to, like, I need to find a publisher. That helps. Yeah. I know, I do know a guy, but, you know, <laughs> that's a conversation for a different time. <laughs> but I will say, keep your eyes open, because I have played super early versions of this game, and it was delightful. So I'm really excited about it. <laughs> well, thank you. And I've had a great deal of fun playing play tests with you and i'm really looking forward to this so tonight we are playing uh, a cool and lonely courage i'm gonna just pass this back to you betsy if you're comfortable kind of walking us through but i think what we're gonna do to start out with is give you all a little bit of background history on what this game is is kind of the, the time period and the people that we're working with for this game. And then we'll give you a brief introduction in terms of characters so that y'all kind of know who we are. And then we will jump into the game itself. How's that sound? That sounds great. I will give 
uh, some of the historical background. And in fact, we can introduce our characters as part of play. If that okay, cool. Good. Even better. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This game, as I mentioned, was developed by Alex White, who has uh, really been steeped in this history. And the history of the special operations executive known as the SOE is that it was a British World War II organization formed to aid local resistance movements and conduct espionage, sabotage, and reconnaissance in occupied Europe against the Axis powers. Few people were aware of its existence, and it was sometimes known as the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. <laughs> the SOE were trained as spies and commandos, and unusually, F section, which operated in France, was prepared to put women in the front line. And they were trained mm. in weapons and unarmed combat, just like the men. From June 1942 onwards, women were sent as couriers and wireless radio operators. They could travel in the daytime with much more freedom than men. The Captain Jepson, who was a senior recruiter for the SOE, felt that women were particularly well suited to the SOE role because of their cool and lonely courage. Hence, that's the name, the name of the game. Of the game. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> there was also originally some thinking that women would be treated better if they were captured. In reality, uh, this was not the case. If they were captured, they were considered spies and they were not subject to the Geneva Convention and they faced horrible treatment. Nacht und Nebel, the Gestapo called it. Night and fog. This is the tragic story of their successes and hopes and dramas. Tragic role-playing story about the heroic women of the SOE during World War II. And we can begin now. We have all already been captured. Picture us in prison, in adjacent cells, whispering to each other when we get the chance, telling the stories that led each of us to this terrible place, how we arrived, who we got to know, our mission, and eventually how we were captured. Here is where we can introduce ourselves. I'm Magda. Or, well, you might know me as... Marie Elise, you would picture me as a young Polish woman with curly hair, speaking somewhat accented English, but inconspicuous to the eye, with a slightly mousy appearance. And in Dubois, I mean, I, I use Marcel here. Uh, I was married to Pierre. He was the love of my life, and when he was killed in the war, I had to do something about it. I had to, I had to be able to take some kind of action. I couldn't just stay home anymore. I have this very red mane of hair, and, and I think it might have gotten me into trouble because it's hard for me to cover up, but here I am. You know what gets me into trouble? I don't like lying. But that's tough for a spy. <laughs> Sister Elise always told me that I shouldn't lie, and I believed her, and it's difficult. It is. It's difficult. How can you be a spy when you do not lie? Uh, they call me Celine, but I'm actually Denise Dupont. I was a shop girl, and when the Nazis invaded my family escaped to England, and they're still there, but I decided to come back because I can't stand my mother country being overtaken by these Nazis. I, too, I, I couldn't watch it happen, and there was nothing that the Poles would let me do. The British would let me come here. You know, I was a journalist before and uh, gotten into some interesting situations I don't know. I, I guess I thought I would be better at this from those experiences. Maybe it's not about being better. Maybe this is just what happened. I don't know. I I think maybe maybe at least I hope I hope it made a difference. Well, we shall see. 
As we tell each chapter in flashback, the color fades to sepia, and our stories will come to life. We begin with our arrival in France. For some, it is coming home. For others, it is unfamiliar. There are German soldiers everywhere. Even the familiar seems unfamiliar. The officers eat and drink at the best places. The soldiers drink in the bars and cafes. The soldiers sometimes take what they want from the farmers. People are often stopped for their papers. The Gestapo seems to be everywhere. Wealthy elites and collaborators get on with the Germans, all while thousands of Jews are rounded up and sent off to death camps. Some people are afraid. Some are collaborators. Some are angry with the Allies, and some will aid the resistance in whatever way they can. But they all look the same to you. The arrival chapter will focus on a slice of life and our relationships, getting to know the people in our circuit, meeting our circuit leader, full-time members of the resistance that we work with, the ordinary people who are risking their lives to support us. There are colleagues, feelings may vary. Some may be glad to see you, some may resent you, some may fancy you and try it on with you. Some may fear what you might mean for their existing relationships. Some may look down on you because you're a woman or welcome you because you remind them of their daughter. Supporting characters might be other members of the SOE, resistance fighters, or their families. In your books, you can see examples. I think I should not read them out here for the sake of efficiency. But I will now reveal each of our cards, giving us the opportunity to kind of think for a moment about what you want your arrival scene to be based on what your card is. So, Senda, mm -hmm. your card is the Jack of Clubs. <laughs> uh -huh. Good. Andy, your card is the Three of Diamonds. My card is the Ten of Diamonds. And you'll recall the, this is a good time now to make a couple of cards of characters who become relevant to your story. These might be people you're staying with, resistance members that you meet, other people that you meet, etc. Any of you have a scene in mind? I do, actually. Do you have one, Andy? I do. Do you want to go first? You can go first. I can go first, you. sure. I arrive by train. No, I don't. They already told us we parachuted in. Scratch that. But you could get here by train. Oh, okay. Oh, they just had to parachute us into France. Correct. Okay. Denise is disguised as a cosmetic company representative. And so she has a great big bag with the company label on the front. I feel like I'm I'm just going to call it uh, Marie K because I'm not going to remember <laughs> sure. anything else. Okay. So she is fairly young and has been trained as a courier. And so she makes her way to kind of a, a, a beaten down hotel that's a little bit out of the way. And... There are a couple of people that she meets there. She meets the front desk clerk, Jean-Baptiste, and the bellhop, Claude. I think both who are, if they're not SOE members, they are sympathizers. So I see Claude as another young person, and then Jean-Baptiste probably as, a, as an older gentleman, perhaps even the owner of the hotel. So I, I think it, some, somehow I need to meet Leon. <laughs> Do I set up and then y'all will take parts and then we can role play? Exactly. Or you can narrate okay. as you wish. You know, I think this young Marie K representative coming into this hotel and meeting Claude and Jean-Baptiste. Remind us of which Claude and Jean-Baptiste are. So Claude is uh, the bellhop. Okay. And then Jean-Baptiste is the person at the front desk. 
Oh. I, I will be Claude if you don't have a preference. I can be Jean Baptiste, or you know what? I could be Leon. Yes. yes, that too. That might be more important. Yes. Denise goes up to the front desk and checks in as Celine, which is her code name. And I think Jean, uh, Jean Baptiste snaps at Claude to get oh, her yes. bags. What? Yes, I'm right here. Yes, I will carry your bags, miss. Yes, I have your bags. Uh, thank you. Right here. Very safe bags. Uh, be be careful the with the uh, with the makeup bag. It it contains they- a lot of powders. If they get mixed up, it's not going to help me sell anything. Sure, sure, absolutely. And he flings it over his back <laughs> <laughs> and carries it over his shoulder. <laughs> well, well, that's one way to do it. Um, There's a spring in his step. <laughs> yes. So I think they go up some stairs and... Uh, it's right here. It's right here. This one, number six think you'll have everything that you need and then i can just i can just oh um sorry i didn't know anybody was was waiting to meet you in here i'll just i'll just i'll, I'll go ahead and just i'll just put this down for you right here or there or where would you just where would you just, like just to, right there okay right right there and yeah. yeah fantastic fantastic um you could yeah denise hands him some money <laughs> <laughs> always always tip your bellhop they know much, everything. Much appreciate. So, Betsy, do you want to describe for us how Leon looks? Leon is uh, is an an older gentleman with a, a thick beard and a, a slightly disheveled appearance. Ah, oh, Denise at long last. Celine. Ah, oh, Celine. Oh, my memory. It will. Uh, it, it will get the best of me, Celine, Celine. I yes. must remember that. I'm uh, assuming you're Leon. I am. Yes. Yes. We have been, we've been waiting for you. Uh, and, uh, your, your luggage is all accounted for? Yes. I did travel with much. We were hoping that you would be able to bring some of the, um, well, some supplies. So I take the giant makeup bag and put it on whatever they call that stand where you put things, where you put the The suitcase. The luggage rack. I don't remember. (laughs) This is a fancy hotel. It has a luggage rack, I guess. And Uh flips it open and, and, you know, the two sides, they look like there's makeup in them, but it folds up. And under sort of another fake layer of makeup is guns. Other supplies? And money? Guns and money. That is... Oh, what? It is... It is like you're sent from heaven. We have, we have been experiencing shortages, particularly in the funding area. But all those, those weapons will come in handy too, I'm sure. I'd like to keep one. Oh, but the rest, of course. of course, you can hand out as as needed. Well, our our band here is small but reliable, and it's uh, palms that need greasing, you know, palms that need greasing. Always. Oh, well, you you must make relationships with the with the women of the neighborhood, and we will. We will use you well to bring messages and and funding from place to place. Well, I mean, I do have some real makeup I can sell. I, I would hope so. Otherwise, <laughs> how would you how would you uh, blend in, as it were? Exactly. The the Marie K people have no idea who their selling representatives are sometimes. <laughs> Well, let's let us keep them in the dark for a while longer. It's it's a good cover for a single woman. It is, and uh, and you will surely you will surely get to meet the uh, the the ladies of the of the collaborators as well as the as as well as those more kindly disposed. Mm-hmm. I I do hope that as you discover. Uh, their secrets as you talk about those ladies that th- things that ladies talk about 
uh, that that you make sure that information is, is known to us. Always. Yeah, you'd be surprised what ladies talk about when no men are around. I assume it is Brazier's. It is not Brazier's. <laughs> uh, I mean, occasionally. Sure, but uh, all, all kinds of things. Brazier's uh, and affairs of the heart, no? Yes, those are those are true, yes. But also the comings and goings of other people and... and some sometimes people let things slip when they're not paying attention. So, well, that is why you were here. Yes, I mean we do talk about more than just love and bras, but you know that's probably a good, you know, particularly the love thing. That's a good probably chunk of the conversation. <laughs> When you feel that the that the seed has reached its conclusion, you can you can make that decision. Yes, I think we're good. <laughs> yes, bras and love, that's what we talk about. Think that you found the end of it. Uh my next lasers and feelings hack. <laughs> Braziers and love. <laughs> Braziers and affairs Ooh. of the heart. Oh it's going to be fantastic. I have thoughts. Sign me up for that one. Yeah. <laughs> I have a thought for my scene. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to kind of run it out there. And maybe either you would have input on which part of it is best to play. So because my card is clubs, and that is misfortune. And this is me meeting my Mikey for the first time, like the people that I'm going to be working with. I think what might actually happen is that I'm, I'm not sure if I should show up right before this and escape or show up it may be, maybe makes more sense to show up right after it. I think that there's been a raid on this mm. particular set of people and a bunch of them aren't there anymore. And so I'm not sure I'm not sure if I should show up and just barely escape with a couple of them or show up in the wreckage as a couple of them are coming back to salvage anything that they can. Thoughts, feelings on what would be more interesting? It might be, I, I'm, I'm starting to lean as I'm saying it out loud more towards like it's already happened. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I show up. I think that's an, uh, a more... Like maybe they acted too early on some information. Yeah. Right. You may want to think about whether you had a role intended or otherwise in the misfortune. Right. That leads me back to the first one a little bit because I'm very obvious with the red hair. So actually, so here's, here's, here's what I think is going to happen. Okay. So uh, Marcel is walking down the street. She's very sort of demurely dressed in blacks, the sort of, and basically mourning clothes ongoing, being a widow and, and also using that as the reason for her presence here. And I think she's on her way, having just moved in with a family that she's going to be staying with while she's here. She's on her way to meet the people that she'll be working with for the first time. And she actually gets stopped and asked for her papers. She goes through all of that. She provides her papers. They accept them. They don't seem to notice anything out of the ordinary. And so as if she were just an ordinary person going to an ordinary place, she continues on to the location in which she's meant to meet with the other people that she'll be working with. Now, unfortunately, with the red hair, and maybe something tipped them off on her papers that wasn't quite right. And so they just decided to follow up and see what happened. The scene is actually um, Marcel sitting down. Leon is there. Um, a couple of other gentlemen are there also, Gustave and Gaston. And basically, we're doing introductions when there is... I might just narrate this one because it might just make more sense. Yeah, so I'm for starting it. to realize yeah. this is going to make more sense narrated as I say it. So we're making introductions. Um, Leon is is um, having a, we're having a conversation about how I'm going to fit into this group and what information they're expecting me to gather. I also brought money and and got it to him. So I'm I'm you know we're we're exchanging the money and that sort of thing. There's a knock at the door, loud demanding voices in French and German. Gaston shoves me and Gustave and Leon out the back door into the back alley, basically to run. So as we're and so as we're running away, we're hearing the shouts of him getting captured and taken away by the Nazis. 
I think that that's my misfortunate arrival. Very bad. That is indeed nobody misfortune. died in the scene. I am not in the same village that you two are, and I'm staying with a doctor's family. They do not know I'm a wireless operator. They don't know that I'm doing that. What they do know is that I am a nurse, and uh, or at least that I. I'm a reasonable approximation of a nurse. That is what <laughs> they have been told. Dr. Flameau is the uh, is my host, and he is doubtful about me because why are they sending this nurse that he has never heard of or seen to live with him? And why can't they use someone familiar? Why must he host her, et cetera, et cetera. He's a grump. I think that the scene is also me meeting my handler, which has to be done in under challenging circumstances because I'm under the eye of Dr. Flameau. And my handler is uh, Armand. He is a young man who, if we're honest, is, is pretty cute. But anyway... <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who must fake an injury to come into the clinic to meet me. Because I have a diamond, this scene is going to be one of success. Would one of you like to play Dr. Flameau and one of you like to play Armand? I would love to play Dr. Flameau unless you have an attachment, Andy. <laughs> I can be the handsome young one. I, m I missed his name, though. I'm sorry. Armand. Armand. Armand comes into the clinic complaining of of stomach pain because that's nice in general i'm gonna have to touch his stomach <laughs> <laughs> i didn't i actually didn't think about that would he see would he talk to the nurse or the doctor first probably the nurse probably, probably the, the nurse, nurse. Uh, and and your um Ow. your your ailment yeah my uh my stomach hurts it's like a weird stabbing pain well i'll um I, I suppose. Ow. Perhaps have you have have you had anything to eat which has um, disrupted your digestion? Uh, not that I'm aware of. I haven't really been changing my diet. It is um, stabbing pains are are often, as they say, um, the gas. No, I know what that's like. Uh, this is different. I'm worried I might have a. Kidney stone. We must get you a lot to drink then. A, a lot of water to drink. Um, and, and perhaps a, a private room. Uh, Dr. Flameau, is there a private room? Hmm? Hmm? Yes, whatever. Do you... Ow. I'm sure there's nothing wrong with that one. You didn't just send him on. It's fine. He's young. He's being stupid. He probably drank too much last night. Doctor, I've, I've been hungover before. This is not hungover. Fine, fine. I'm busy at the moment. If you insist on taking him to a private room, carry on. I can look at him in a minute. I have more urgent patients. Over over there? No, not that one. Use the other room. Oh. Um, uh, number three. Number three. There's someone in number two already. Three. Three. Three it is then. I swear, it's like she's not even paying attention. Young, uh, your your name is uh, Armand. Oh, I I'm pleased to meet you. I am uh, I'm Marie Elise. Uh, it's nice to meet you. It's nice to meet anybody who takes things seriously when a patient complains. You are not actually in pain, are you? Are we in the room with the door closed? We are. Okay. And he's like, no, no, I'm not actually in pain, but I needed to see you. I'm glad that you got here safe. If you, if you say I helped you, that awful man might be nice to me. Well, we can, yeah, we can do that. What would you give somebody with an, with an upset stomach or a potential kidney stone? Maybe uh, a lot to drink and an emetic? You can just say you gave me some of that and then sent me off. Okay. And to take care of it by myself, because that's not something I'd rather stick around to pretend to do. I Yes. 
I, uh, nor would I if I were you. Um, so what do you need from me? What message can I pass on? Did you bring the money? I have some funds and my, and my wireless set. Going to need more money. There is a, a new, there's a new captain in town who is very bribable, but his, uh, his price is much higher than the other officers. Well, we will, uh, I can message for a courier. Uh, if, do you have a, do you have a space where I can set up? Uh, yes, we do. Basement of our safe house. Ah, we can run a wire up the side of the house. Yes. A gutter or something that we can, ru- that will make it inconspicuous. Yes, we have gutters. Most houses do, so why wouldn't we? I, I do not know anything about France. Marie, Elise, are you still in there? Uh, almost finished. Okay, I will, I will wire for money. I will come to your, I will come to your basement and send the wire with my equipment. And um, please, please look relieved when you depart. Uh, I may not be there in person, but the the person who who opens the door, if they if they say hello in any other language other than French, they are one of us. Oh. Okay. I will, um... So, you know, ciao, or hello in English. (laughs) Uh, and, And I should respond in kind? I must... No, then you say hello back in French. Oh. Oh. Okay. Because the instinct would be just to br- say whatever they would say. I see. I see. Uh, that is clever. I must yes. get back. Yes, thank you very much. And he'll take the things from you that you offer him. Wonderful. Well, we can chalk that up, I think, as a completed scene and as a success. I have not imp- impressed Dr. Flameau, but I have made a connection with Armand. <laughs> yes. I think you probably did a bunch of things successfully with that, even if it wasn't <laughs> Dr. Flamo. He could be impressed when they when the guy leaves. <laughs> Let us hope. Let us but hope. We we didn't we just didn't wait far enough to see it. <laughs> well, that is our arrival. We next experience a mission. That is to say, in our captivity, we describe to each other our mission. There are many kinds of missions, uh, sabotage, reconnaissance, assassination, career, wireless transmission. The Nazis are brutal in their t- retaliation against both the resistance and the local population, who they will happily blame for any problem. They want to make local people more likely to turn in outsiders, resistance and SOE members. Being stopped and having your forged papers checked is always a risk when doing courier work. Finding somewhere safe for a wireless transmission and completing it before the radio cars track you down is always a risk. That's why you only might live six weeks. Yeah. Supporting characters uh, might be other members of the SOE, resistance fighters, members of the local population, or Nazi officers, depending on what we roll. And you see there the examples as well. Senda, your card. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Is the two of spades. Oh my gosh. I'm having a a rough deal over uh, here. Uh-huh. Andy, your card is the seven of hearts. My card is the seven of diamonds. How come you y'all are getting all the red cards? I don't know. Well, probabilities <laughs> oh, are funny. that will stop. Yes. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I can actually kick this off because I actually think this may be a relatively straightforward scene where I arrive, Armand is there. So it's very easy. Uh, We recognize each other. We run a, a sort of antenna wire up the side of the building and I wire England saying we need to arrange for funds. 
and I think I'll just keep narrating it because I think it's, it's a relatively, as they say, relatively straightforward message that comes back, which is that funds cannot be sent from England, but that there is another agent in another village about two hours away who has, who was sent with uh, considerable funds and may be able to share. And that we should contact Leon for that. Andy, do you have a thought? Because yours is um, also going to be successful. Yeah, right? no, my, my my only idea was, well, I just had a flashback back to showing Leon the money and the guns. There is definitely some money not in that case. Because I don't trust people, so I didn't mm-hmm. give him all the money. No, I don't know, because I... I, I would I would love to have a romantic entanglement, but I don't know with whom. So you can always make, make a new character. Up. Yeah, maybe a woman that you sell cosmetics to, and just to make things dangerous. She's also maybe she's also a uh, mistress of a German soldier or something. Heck yeah, <laughs> she is. Or <laughs> sorry, are we, have we switched lives? <laughs> I want to put this. You can reject it. The wife of a German officer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah. Just say wife. The yeah. wife who has taken up, they've taken up a residence somewhere. A female German names. Oh, Helga. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> wife of German officer. So I think, so I, yes, I think we can, you know, sli- slightly veil this in a, uh, just in a monologue. <laughs> not a monologue. Wait, you you don't want to you don't want to RP this? Because <laughs> I'm telling Sometimes you, the one I who RP RP's the stuff like this. this. Yeah. Okay. What? Oh my gosh! I'm so bad at RPing love scenes. So oh, okay, you can you don't have to RP the love scene. You can narrate it. It's okay. Or I'll play it with you. That's fine too. Yeah, let's do that, Helga. <laughs> Send a Helga. Okay. So you've already met her, and you're already in a relationship with her, or is this the first moment where you? We might have met briefly, or someone sent me to her who thought that you would like my makeup. Sure. So so this is like the sparks fly moment. Yes. I, I knock on the door. So she opens the door, and it's a, it's, it's a really nice space. It's really well decorated, very nice furniture, probably belongs to whoever they kicked out of the house, mm-hmm. right? She didn't actually decorate this herself. And, um, you know, come in, come in, leads you to the living room, sits down on the couch with a spot next to, you, next to her on the couch so that you can open up your case on the, uh, on the coffee table. Mm-hmm. So uh, Marie Kay has actually a, um, a new line this year. Um, oh, really? Yes, that is bolder than, uh, than other years that they've done. It is uh, quite a dark lip that they are um, that they are is that what making. you're wearing right now because it's really flattering on you. Uh, yes I am and there's um, a new matching bronzer that really highlights it and I open up my bag which is full of makeup right now and start like handing things out and do, do you mind I can Ooh. um you know I can are you wearing anything now I mean you have beautiful glow right no well oh gosh thank you i mean <laughs> i just i just rolled out of bed and you know i i knew you were coming so i didn't i didn't put anything oh, on fabulous. yet this morning but do you do you mind if i just so this one right here is yes. the one you're putting that one and she just reaches out and like rubs at your cheek a little bit to see like how well it stays on yeah <laughs> yes although if you're not wearing anything maybe you want to try our moisturizer first yeah i uh, sure can you just show me how it, how oh, it yeah. goes? And she 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 dips her her like fingers into it, and then she's and then she she says, "All right, you should always apply to it in a in a circular motion, going away from your nose. Um, that way, rubbing won't uh, rubbing your rubbing your face won't cause any wrinkles. Always, right. you want to use the nose and as a as your right. Absolutely. I point. mean, I I hope that I still look as youthful and fresh as you do. Um, when I'm much older than I am now. <laughs> well, I'm sure that'll be a long time away, ma'am. Please, please call me Helga. Well, I'm Celine. 
It's it's really nice to meet you, Celine. Look, I, I, why don't why don't I just take one of everything, and then I'll probably be out in like just a couple of days. You can come by again. We'll have tea or something. Uh. uh uh, yes, certainly. I mean, I can get you one of them. I mean, I can set up a supply to be shipped or... Well, I mean, just one of like all of all that new bold line. And may- then maybe I-, I need to look into some of the older stuff, um, you know, later this week. I, Say uh, Wednesday? Uh, yes. I mean, I do have a catalog I can leave here. Um, I don't I don't think that's necessary. I would much rather hear you talk about them. And maybe like... Blushy face maybe like uh 11:45 oh on on wednesday tuesday tuesday when yeah tuesday tuesday uh, yes indeed i can i can uh, i can make that um <laughs> she she claps and the butler comes in i think <laughs> and just hands her like uh, some money hands her some money and then she just says you know make sure that we have lunch arranged for tomorrow at 11:45 please there's going to be two and like shoes him off. <laughs> and Celine thinks she knows what's going on, but <laughs> she's not a hundred percent convinced until the uh, n- until lunch the next day wh- that we don't have to describe. I think people can see where this is going. We we can end this scene with um, I th- I think again feel free to reject, but I I think that we can we can end this scene with the. With the husband arriving and they're having to cut their oh yes Ooh, their, I like that, that very short. very much especially yeah. yes the the German officer husband yes. arrives then shows up yep there go. <laughs> coming dear <laughs> well I will see you tomorrow then tomorrow tomorrow yes uh, tomorrow absolutely Helga it was a pleasure to meet you Celine truly. <laughs> and scene, I think. Yes, that scene. That's not going to be great for espionage or anything. <laughs> I mean, it might be. You don't know that. I think C- Commandant Storm might uh, <laughs> might have some secrets. Helga Storm. Right? Helga Storm. Helga Storm. So I am a little bit stuck. I'm not going to lie. I've been thinking um, about this a little bit. And um, because it is a death card that came up to me for me, I think that the direction I would like this scene to go is I think that Gaston, who got captured, getting me and Gustave and Leon out in my last scene. Yeah. I think that he I think we're going to find out that he's dead. That he's been executed. And I'm not sure where the best place to set that scene is. Do you have any thoughts? I would I would say the one of the best places to pass information along is probably a bar. With a lot of I don't, people around. No? You think, don't think so? Maybe a cafe or something. I'm not sure as a widow that I would be at a bar. That is fair. I forgot you uh-huh. were a widow. Maybe a cafe... Um, and I think I'm actually there with the woman who is pretending to be my sister-in-law, who is putting me up. And I will find a name for her any moment now. <laughs> mm. Genevieve. So I think that this is a situation in which in which Gustave or Leon has to pass me that information. Um, gosh, but how is this the mission, though? That's the problem. That's what I'm stuck on. I don't know. I'm having trouble merging it all together in my brain. Mm-hmm. Please feel free to feed me ideas and thoughts. This is maybe, so I need to pass money. Yeah. Potentially, I think, because we know that Leon is getting asked for more money. So I am actually maybe doing a courier job right now, but sitting in a cafe and Genevieve is part of my cover right now mm-hmm. that we're there together. And so um, I think then Leon or Gustav, whoever we feel like, we know Leon better has to basically find a reason to approach us and for me to give him something. And he's also going to pass us the information or pass me the information in some way, despite the public setting that um, Gaston has been executed. So I think that I need a Genevieve and I think that I need a Leon. Well, I've been Leon, so I can be him again. Okay. Okay. Yes, I can be Genevieve. So you're just, you're, you're my cover story, but um, I think we're sitting actually out on a patio 
And it's just, it's a little cafe. It's not the kind of place that we would find officers or something, but there are for sure German soldiers, like, carousing and stuff. Mm. So it's, it's, you know, we're definitely on guard, or at least I'm on guard. But I think that it's like a brunch, and did so we're they having... have brunch in the 40s? I'm sure they did. Well, I'm having a croque monsieur. I don't know what you're having. <laughs> well, then I will have a croque madame. <laughs> Which is the exact same thing, but with an egg, right? <laughs> or is it the opposite? I can't remember. They both have things on them I don't eat. Yes. And, and of course, like a coffee. I think that we are sitting there having a conversation, mm-hmm. trying to be as normal as possible. I do think that their bread is better than last time. Indeed. It, it, this is how it normally tastes. I think last time was just a fluke. Do you think so? I... Do you think... I hope that their chef is all right. I, I, I wouldn't want anything to happen to him. Oh, I think that their 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 chef is fine. We but we came on a uh, we came on a Tuesday last time, which I believe was is the chef's normal day off. Well, I guess we shouldn't come on Tuesdays anymore. Oh, oh, hello, two such lovely ladies <laughs> having a having a, a meal together. It is um, it warms my heart. Warms yes. my heart. Can can we help you, sir? Do you do you need a seat? I would absolutely love to join two such beautiful women and your hair. My goodness. You are a striking woman. Yes, th- thank you. It's from my mother's side. She was expatriate. <laughs> you know, just to just to bask in the in the beauty of two young women makes this man's heart uh, <laughs> makes this man's heart warm. He, um, please, I I insist. You, you're too kind. Will you will you sit with us for a moment? I, um, I I I will. Is he disguised I, as a super old guy? That's how I'm picturing him. I mean, he's already pretty he's old. Not, right. yeah, like he's not young to begin with. When when Leon sits down. So I, I just, I, I actually have a bag under the table and I just slide it over to him with my foot under the table. So now that it, now it's by like his chair mm-hmm. instead of by my chair. Do you need anything to eat? The compliments are certainly worth a cup of coffee at least. Well, I, I will, I will take you up on that young lady. I will. I, and he, uh, he's leans down and fumbles and you can tell that he's, emptying his bag into yours under the table. I, uh, I am, I am melancholy today. Oh no. Oh no. Why is that? I lost a friend. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. He was, uh, well, he was a good man. I will miss him. I am most sad to hear that i have also i have i have lost people myself and i i know that it is difficult even even if you don't know them well yet i just i picture him on the other side of the door let me smile and i well but no talk of that Talk of sugar and sweet things. I think we should just call the scene right there. hope you enjoyed episode 140 of She's a Super Geek. If you liked what you heard, go ahead and head out to your favorite podcatcher and give us a five-star rating and review. You can find Betsy Rosenblatt online on Twitter at 221Betsy. Our theme song is Rock and Roll Play Baby by Kieran Strange. You can find music, merchandise, and tour dates online, kieranstrange.com, or on Twitter at Kieran Strange. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you in two weeks for the conclusion of our World War II adventure.
She's a rock.